So she's going to she, she's going to go off of how you look, how you just uh verbalize what you said, your bo your body language, your energy. She's going off all of that and she's going to judge you right away. And so if you are not doing too well in those categories, the judgment is not going to be good. Welcome to the Max Theory Podcast. All right, cool. Let's get straight into it. So welcome, brothers. We're doing um, today's show, the Max Fury Show, today on YouTube. If you're watching live, we've got a special guest here today. We've got Trey Morgan, um, you know, one of the master, master at, his, at his craft. Today, we're going to dive into cold approach. So I'm very excited. Um, would you say you're one of the, like a kind of up and comer or newcomer on the scene? Or would you call yourself a veteran? How would you kind of judge yourself in terms of um, amongst other coaches out there? Yeah, so I mean, I've been in and out of the niche, and uh, I mean, there's there's definitely like a lot of dating coaches out there. So you, some people might say like, why even go in? You know what I mean? Like, there's so many people in the in the niche. But I just, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just in the niche, like being myself, bro. Like, I know I have a lot of value to bring to the niche because, like, I struggle so much in this area of my life, man. Like. And uh, it's, for me, like, I got into, you know, pickup in, uh, I want to say, sophomore year of high school. And my goal was to get a girlfriend because, like, you know, talking with my boys and stuff, they'd always talk about, oh, you know, this is happening with this girl. And, you know what I mean? Like, telling me different stories that they happening. Nothing was going on with me, bro. Like, I just had to pretend, like, you know, I was getting girls and stuff, but I wasn't. So... I basically started going online trying to figure stuff out. Like, how do you get a girlfriend? How do you get a date? This. But really, my issue was I didn't have confidence in myself. You feel me? I didn't have that self-esteem. I didn't have, you know, I, I didn't, wasn't able to express myself. So even when a girl would show interest, it, it, it didn't matter because I would somehow sabotage it. Like, I would somehow do something to turn her off. You know what I mean? So... I just like basically, you know, once I found out that there was this thing called cold approach, I started going uh, to malls, to grocery stores. I wouldn't do it in school because I didn't want, you know what I mean, like, you know, to get rejected or something and then the whole school would know. So I would do it, you know, the malls, or the grocery stores. And basically, bro, I just, I just like, you know, started to, you know, get numbers and, you know, start to see little, little stuff happening. I'm like, okay, this, this is actually a way to do it. So I just kept doing that. When I got out of high school, I just kept doing cold approach, like talking to different girls, a lot of different rejection and stuff. You know, I'm going to just be real. But, you know, you start to get little numbers. You start to build your confidence. You start to see patterns. You know what I mean? And then once you start getting the numbers, you start getting the dates. Then you start going on dates. Then from there, um, you know, that's when I, I, I finally lost my virginity. I lost my virginity like late, bro, like 20, uh, 24 in my opinion, that's late. So I lost my virginity. Then from there, you know, that was a huge confidence boost because it wasn't luck. It was me applying myself, you feel me? So I was like, oh, okay, shit. Like, I didn't develop a skill here. And then from there, I started pulling, like, in the nightclubs. And uh, you know what I mean? And then from there, uh, I would say, like, it start, I started to realize I don't really want a girlfriend. I think the, the rotation thing made more sense to me. So I started building rotations. And then, you know, I just got to a point where it's just no longer a problem for me. Like my day in life, it used to be a big issue, a big problem. It's no longer a problem. So it's like, it just got to a point where my friends, the ones, the friends who I was like embarrassed to talk about, like, you know, dating subjects and sex and stuff, they started asking me questions like, oh, how are you doing this? How are you getting this result? You know? And then from there, it's like, it just turned into a passion and like already was doing some stuff online, like marketing, uh, building websites. I was in the marketing niche and I used to help people with sales funnel. So I just switched what I was doing to the marketing niche and like that's what I'm doing now because it's my passion and I feel like bro I, I can come in this niche and, and really help a lot of guys. So that's where I'm at with it. Like I'm gonna just create my own lane. You know there's all these other dating coaches and some of them are good for real. Some of them you know maybe not so much but I'm gonna just create my own lane bro and that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Wow that's amazing bro. Cause, yeah, twenty four. Why do you think it took you so long? I'm uh one of the biggest things I didn't mention this, but my parents uh, raised me um, Christian Baptist. So 
I kind of had this idea that if you, it's, it's the idea that if you have sex, basically you, you'd end up in hell, right? I had that idea and like, I try to like push past it, but it was so ingrained, it was hard to get past it, you feel me? And like, I had other friends that were Christians and stuff and they were doing their thing. So I was like, yo, I mean, if they're doing that thing, I should be able to do it too. But that, that belief was so strong in me, that was a big part. And then I wasn't able to express myself um, uh, like, you know, I wasn't able to lead women. So like, and then I felt weird when a woman would try to lead me. So it would just, I would just figure out a way to sabotage the situation. You feel me? And then once, once I left high school, that's when I started, uh, challenging my beliefs, you know, with the whole code, code approach allows you to really explore yourself, you know, with all the rejections and the different obstacles you have to face. You start questioning different beliefs that are holding you back. I started questioning my religion, like, yo, I, I there's no it's gonna be tough for me to really like achieve my dating goals with this belief that i'm going to hell if i have sex you know what i mean so at some point i just did my research and i just came to the point where man i'm gonna just be i'm gonna just live bro like like you know i just kind of just got out of the religion and just became like a spiritual being and um that's what made my pickup really you know start that's when the results started coming once i like let go all of those limiting beliefs that were holding me back and then, you know, 24, I guess you could say, was when I just, I guess that's just when when it was time for me for it to happen, so. That's crazy. I probably resonate with that as well, because, yeah, I was brought up in the church. I was even playing instruments in the church, playing drums. Like, I used to be in the choir, like, yeah, like, full into it. And, like, literally, I remember my cousin, actually, but this is probably back in 2011, my cousin, or 2010, my cousin, he was like one of them bad boys, like robbing people and doing madnesses. And he actually got like, I find the people that are most reckless when they go to Christianity, they convert hard. So he converted, like must've been like maybe 1920. I was in uni at the time. And he was showing me stuff about like, there was this mad book about people going to hell and like hellfire and like crying, praying, like crying for Jesus. And then I was just shook. I was like, oh man, like, <laughs> let me, I don't, I don't, try to, I don't try to experience that. Like, let me, so I literally cut off girls for like, one like in, in my life like but from losing my virginity like um like yeah I was, I, was, well, I was not really young 16 i thought that was quite late actually in my time um through to like now i'm 30. um i've had a couple years out where i thought okay let me really get into this church thing and nothing ruins your game more than that <laughs> i'm telling you like it's almost it almost downs your drive like because i had times where i'd be living at home i would i was like maybe in my early twenties, still living at home. And I felt like, you know, that was cool because, you know, I'm not, I don't really need to live by myself. I don't need to get girls and chicks and stuff. Um, but now it, when you take that away, it's like, oh shit, I need to be by myself. I need to get as many girls here as possible. So literally, I mean, my, I mean, I've, I've done other videos where I share my lay count. Like I, I used to be quite embarrassed about it, but I feel like I don't care now. So my lay count 70 and it would, I would definitely have been over a hundred if I hadn't have those years out of the game. If that makes sense. But, um, I, I, and when you mentioned that kind of triggered, I was like, oh, and I actually thought about it the other, the other day, like in terms of how those things can really impact you. Like that is a huge impact. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Where? There's even another coach I'm working with closely. He's um, and he talks about how his family, he was very religious. So he said he didn't even kiss a girl till college. Like, and that's probably one of the biggest things. And I, I feel like some of these coaches that, you know, they're claiming a thousand plus lay counts and stuff. Like they almost discard religion completely. But you, you've taken a kind of balanced approach. You, so you're spiritual basically. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I'm into meditation. You know what I mean? Um. You know what I mean? Like, I basically, I'm open to uh, hearing, you know, like anybody that comes from any religion that wants to talk to me, I'm open to hearing what they're saying and I'm not going to just block them off because I have a certain view and, oh, you're wrong. Like, I think there's good things you can learn from any religion, you know what I mean? So that's where I'm at with it now. Like, any anything that makes sense that will make me better as a man, I'll take it from a religion. Like, right now, um, I would say like the philosophy I'm following the most right now is uh, stoicism. You know what I mean? Because I think like a lot of things that it talks about, like especially the the book, um, I don't know if you read the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, but a lot of what he talks about is just being disciplined as a man, you know, having morals, being ethical, um, you know what I mean? Understanding people, like, you know what I mean? If somebody uh, does you wrong, 
you know, try to see, try to understand why did why did he, did he do that? You know, maybe he just has certain experiences in his life. He has a certain way of seeing things. Maybe you could step back and maybe not get too too angry right away. Like, don't be so emotional. You know what I mean? Like, look at your emotions and step back for a second before you make a move. And that that even helps with your game. Like, you know, if if a girl. Uh, you know, says something and, and you know, maybe it, you, you could take it negatively, you could step back and maybe reframe it, like see it differently instead of acting from that negative place. And then instead of maybe getting in an argument with that girl, you can like flip her to see your point of view or, you know what I mean? Like just, so to me, stoicism, um, like I'm not religious or anything, but like I'm into philosophy and, and the, the philosophy of stoicism has been very helpful as far as, like with my game, be evolving as a man, achieving my goals. Cause a lot of it is just about being disciplined, being focused, being strong. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, and basically being a man, you know? For sure. Yeah. I read a couple of, have you heard of Ryan Holiday? I think that's his name. I heard of him. Yeah. It's like, he's got a couple of books, like the only way is of the obstacle is the way. And he's got another book, which I think is all based around stoicism. And, and yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I just noticed, well, you look in good shape, man. Do you train? I do calisthenics. So, mm. like push ups, pull ups, um, deep knee bends, uh, you know, crunches, that kind of thing. But I do it every single day, right? Like, every, every single day. I never miss a day. It's actually the first thing I do when I wake up. And it's at the point now where it's like I'm doing like the one arm push ups and, you know what I mean? Like, really challenging myself because I've been doing it for a long time. Like, ever since I got out of high school, I used to play basketball in high school, and so I was always athletic, and I didn't want to lose my athleticism or, you know, get out of shape. So calisthenics was – it was a way for me to stay in shape and not make excuses like, oh, if let's say I was too busy to get in the gym or whatever the case may be. You can always do, you know, some body weight exercise at your crib. So that's – I just stuck with that and just kept amplifying and making it more difficult for myself. So, yeah. Yeah, man, you can see you got the frame, man. If you were to go hard in like heavy weights and really go into it, you, you I think you you have a crazy physique if you're on if you're interested in that. Um, how has you helped? How has you being in shape um, helped you with women or not really? Or do you reckon you could be fat and you you'd have exactly the same results? Um, I would say being in shape, you know, uh, it communicates. I, I think the 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 benefit of it is obviously you look good. Like I'm not gonna deny that you do look good. But I think what it communicates is it communicates di discipline, it communicates strength, it communicates, um, you know, you, you're probably a, a type of person that doesn't back down from challenges like you, you know, because in order to have a good physique, there's a lot of uh, characteristics you have to have as a, as a, as a man to, to create that physique. So I think what it communicates to a woman subconsciously is, is what, what helps. And I'm aware of that. Um, so I use that to my advantage. And I think when you have a good physique, um, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be like super big or anything, but when you have a good physique, that's clear to the eye, it just communicates a lot of positive things to a woman. Like it communicates, okay, this is not a lazy dude. This is not a dude that's just sitting around. It's not a dude that's, uh, you know what I mean? That's making excuses. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is a, a, a man, you know what I mean? And that's what I want to communicate. Like, I think a lot of my my game is just communicating, like, masculine qualities. Like, you know, qualities that a man, a woman would want to see in her man. You feel me? So, I think uh, getting in shape, it, it communicates a lot of good things that you don't have to say verbally. You see what I'm saying? So, that, I, I, it definitely helps in that regard. Yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely realized that recently. Um, even speaking with other women and even other coaches as well, and that's interesting. Yeah, and I think that's. I mean, why would you want to like portray that versus the opposite of being lazy and undisciplined and unmotivated? Like, who wants to be around? I don't want to be around someone like that, <laughs> let alone a woman. So I definitely look at guys in shape and like, yeah, I respect it a lot because obviously I know what it takes, and I think guys secretly know what it takes as well. Even the guys out of shape, 
Like, and, and you can either hate, you can either hate on that or you can admire it. Like, I will straight up tell someone, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could tell you look at shape, I'm gonna tell you, you know what I'm saying? I've got no problem with that. Um, cool, man. So, yeah, even when I saw your videos before we set this up, I could tell because a lot of times I'll see other coaches that I want to speak to or, or maybe like have a conversation with, and I, I kind of see the videos and I hear, I see the charisma and the style, and, and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about this guy, but I could tell, like, you sound like a guy that gets girls. So, I was like, you know, what? I'd love to hear what you're about. Um, and like even the way you talk about cold approach you probably talk about it like a love and a passion i'm like like almost like cooking or fine wine so tell me about that tell me like yeah tell me tell me about cold approach man because i've got a problem with cold approach i don't know like maybe i'm i think right now because we're in lockdown i feel like you know it's super hard to do it right now especially in london um so and i've been in a relationship for the last three and a half years so my experiences before um I was meeting women like in nightclubs and online mainly. I would never go out in the daytime and cold approach. That was never me. So, you know, I've kind of missed out of that boat there. So I want you to kind of enlighten me and, and the brothers watching, like, what's so good about this cold approach? Like, what what is it? How's it changed your life? Yeah, I'm I'm extremely passionate about it, bro, because uh without it, man, I, I don't know what would happen to me as far as my dating life, bro, because I think just my personality um social circle wasn't wasn't gonna work for me because um like as i said like in in high school and stuff i wasn't like very exp uh i couldn't express myself very well because of certain beliefs that i had the religion was one of them but i just didn't have a lot of self uh, self-esteem and confidence in myself so i would be pretty i'd be more like a quiet dude like m one of those dudes that just let my actions speak louder than my words kind of guy so i was i was cool in school but like I just wasn't very talkative and social. So like, I wasn't like, super, but like, I was like, you know what I mean? Like decent or whatever. But if other guys came around, you know, the, the more charismatic, the more, uh, whatever you want to call it, those guys come around, they'll, the girls go to them, you feel me? And I would kind of, whatever girl would come my way, um, you know, I, I would always find a way to sabotage it anyway. So it didn't matter. But, once I found out about cold approach, what it allowed me to do was I no longer had to worry about, you know, cause a lot of the fear um, was of me afraid of like, what if I say something wrong or do something wrong, then it gets around and people know about it and all that. With cold approach, mm -hmm. it's like every girl you talk to, it's a random girl that you're probably never gonna see again, right? So you can kind of, you can make mistakes, you can try different things, you can see what works for you and you can keep repeating things and 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 get and you know what I mean. You could take it as far as you want. You can start seeing patterns. You could create different styles that work in different contexts. You know, something you want to try out that you saw somebody do. You can go and try it out in code approach. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So I think a lot of it it just fit for my personality because I I'm an action taker. I'm somebody that will will go and do what I need to do. But I'm also not trying to. I, I'm also uh aware of okay what's the consequences of my actions right so with code approach there's not a lot of consequences unless you're doing something that's like you know like uh gonna violate the environment or something like that but you can you can pretty much try out anything you know what i mean you could try direct speaking to a woman direct you could try being indirect you could try being funny you could try it and you get to find what works for you then once you find what works for you then women start showing interest you know you start getting some women you get start getting some numbers you start, uh, you know, from there you figure out, okay, how do I get them on dates? You start getting girls on dates. And basically, like, majority of my success with women has come from a uh, cold approach, bro. Like, just walking up to women, um, you know, either this, you know, deciding whether I'm going to go direct or indirect based on the situation, having a conversation with them, demonstrating as much attractive qualities as I can in that short period of time, getting her number. Not wasting time on the text. I, I don't really teach text game or talk about that too much because I don't waste time too much with that. I just go for a meetup as soon as possible. And then once I get her on the meetup, I just continue whatever vibe or whatever way of being was working for me when I initially got her number. I just amplify that on the date and then, you know, have a good date or whatever. Some women are down to go back to your place that same date. Some are not, but you just go on another date and you make it happen and you, and you take the where you wanted to go. So I personally love code approach because it gives you a lot of, um, you have, you, ba it gives you a lot of control. Like if I want to go and, and, and meet a new girl right now, I can just go out and do it. And I, I understand right now we got coronavirus going on. So uh, for me, I'm in Orlando, Florida, and 
the uh the lockdown and the rules and all that stuff not that serious over here so i can actually go out and code approach right now if i wanted to and like let's say i wanted to get me some new girls i could make it happen in the next you know 30 minutes to an hour you know what i mean it's, it's not it doesn't take a, a long time to get a girl it, once you have the skill set right you have the you know the archetype and all those things down the confidence but yeah you can get results very quickly and it can be a skill it can it can you can basically handle your dating life by developing this skill you know what i'm saying so um so that's that's why i love it bro like it, it it's something that's teachable you know what i mean like you can you can teach it to someone somebody that's struggling you could show them okay you know maybe you're not good with social circle maybe your online game not too great let's let go try this try this and here's how it worked for me let me show you how to do it right <clears throat> so uh yeah man that's that's why i love it like you can you can basically get the results you want in your dating life through cold approach if you know what you're doing and so that's that's why i uh i believe in it so much and i teach <clears throat> yeah i want to become a master at that like honestly like i know i do like um I do kind of um, push for choose the signals, <laughs> like get in great shape, look great. The girls are gonna come to you, but I think you leave a lot of you leave a lot of opportunities, like a lot of uh, women and pussy on the table. Let me just say it: uh, we leave a lot of that on the table. And even like you know, even if a girl does look at you, you still have to have the balls and go and approach her. And you know, it, it, even if you do have some women approaching you, imagine all the others that you know would love for you to speak to them. Because I know some women. Um, you know, obviously they're terrified of, they're probably more shy than guys. You know what I'm saying? They won't even look at a guy they like. Um, and obviously it gives you, yeah, it does give you control. So I'm all for it. So, okay. So how do you practice day game? Like what, what, like, let's say you, you're trying to, you're on your purpose. You're trying to do your marketing. You're doing your marketing business. You've done your calisthenics. You're trying to eat your meals. Like when are you fitting time? Like how is this working? Like if you're a busy guy and you're on your purpose, how are you fitting in cold approach to be good? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm, you know, like I'm pretty busy. It's just, I guess it's a little easier for me because I teach it. So I, you know, I find time for it. But for somebody who doesn't do this as a, a job or not a dating coach or whatever, if you can block out, because, you know, you find time for things that are priority, right? So if you could just block out an hour a day, you know what I mean, to work on, you know, work on your cold approach skills, you know what I mean? An hour a day and you just commit to that, like even if you just commit to that for a month, you know what I mean? You you can make a, a lot of progress just with an hour a day. As long, I think the key thing is consistency, though, right? Like, if you're just doing it like once a week or once a month or whatever, you know, I don't know what to tell you about that. But like, if you can be consistent, because you the the you get good once you start seeing patterns, right? Like once you start building the muscle memory and you start, oh, okay, she's gonna say that, so let me say this, you know, in response, you know. Oh, you know, when there's multiple girls, you know, um, you got to entertain the friends too. You can't just talk. You know what I mean? Like you start to see all the patterns of what you got to do to get the results you want. And if you're consistent with it, you can make it work with just an hour a day. You know what I mean? Because like right now, uh, right now is not a time where I'm going out every day. There's, there's times when I'm doing that, like focus on my business and stuff. But if you, like when I'm in it, I, you know, all I need is like an hour or two a day, you know, depending on, you know, how the day is looking and you can, you can get a good amount of in. Like you don't have, you literally could just go to the grocery store, bro. Like you could just go to whatever grocery store is next to you and just start practicing. You know what I mean? And when you're practicing, you don't have to focus so much on like when guys get it, they focus on, okay, it has to be my perfect idea type or I'm not talking to her. And if you go about it like that, you don't, you're not going to, it's like you got to be waiting around to find her, right? You're not going to get no practice. And so when you start now, you just want to you know, all roll it. So just talk to, you know, whatever girl you see, just get in the mood of, because it's not like a normal thing to talk to a stranger. So you got to get over that first. Like, that's like the first thing you got to get over. And then once you get comfortable with that, then now when you approach a, a woman that you find attractive, because you're comfortable with talking to strangers, you will be able to project your your uh, personality, your confidence a lot better when that when you when you run into that girl you find attractive, right? So, it's like a, it's just a good skill to have because you can pull it out when you need it. You know what I mean? Because there are times we all have to admit there are times when you're you know you're doing your thing and you see a girl that you find attractive, and like if you don't do this and you try to go and talk to her, you're gonna be nervous. You're gonna say some weird things. Your your body language is gonna be off. And 
and then you know if you get that bad experience you're gonna think oh this shit doesn't work but it's not that it doesn't work it's you you weren't comfortable you know what i mean you, you it's not something you do you know what i mean and she's she's judging you she's looking at you and you just don't confident so she's gonna get you're not gonna get a good response from me. so so yeah bro yeah, I love how you brought that down. I love how you brought that down. So that brings me, you, you touched on um, judging you. Okay, so what, what, what's your, oh, I've got a couple of questions here. Okay, what's your views on presentation? Um, and what do you say? What's your go-to thing to say and presentation? Like, how do you approach? Yeah, so uh, basically, like, my goal when I approach a woman is I want to demonstrate, uh, I want to demonstrate confidence. I want to demonstrate that I'm comfortable in my skin. Uh, I want to demonstrate that I'm grounded. Um, I want to demonstrate that I'm, I can lead her, right? That I'm not like, uh, you know, like, um, I'm not, I don't have her on a pedestal, like, oh, whatever you say, whatever you do. No, like, I know what I want. I'm going to lead. I know I'm the man. I know you're the woman. Like, I want to basically demonstrate that I am, because uh, I know there's other guys that are going after this girl. You feel me? So I'm trying to, my goal is to demonstrate that I'm the best potential mate for her, right? And I I do it through, you know, being more confident than those guys, showing <clears throat> showing more masculine qualities, showing her that um you know if if she, if I'm in her life or she's in my life that her life will get better, right? Because of my com through your communication skills, through your confidence, showing her that you're you're protective, like when you're in the environment. You know what I mean? Uh, you can you can handle whatever's gonna happen in, in the environment, so she feels safe around you. You know what I mean? You, I want to show her, you know, my personality. I want to make her laugh, just to show her that you're not the only girl I talk to. I talk to other girls. I'm comfortable with girls. Like I have abundance, right? These are these are things that turn her on because she's, you know, if you're coming up to her and you're uh, making it seem like oh she's so special right off the bat, you're putting you're putting yourself in the same category as all the other guys that are doing that. So. Me, it's like my mentality is more like I'm screening her to see if she fits in my life. You feel me? That's the mentality. And an another big thing I would say is you have to be okay with her uh, with her rejection, right? Because if you're a guy who's like fair and rejection, you're going to like feel to yourself and, um, you know, try to say the perfect thing or whatever. And she's going to pick up on that. Like, oh, no, this dude is walking on eggshells around me. He's trying to he's trying to be perfect. He's trying to say the right thing. He's not being genuine. They, and, you know, we know girls are, like, good at feeling out emotions and vibes and energy and stuff. So she's going to pick up on that, and she and she may reject you. She may say, I have a boyfriend or whatever. They think, oh, yeah, she had a boyfriend. That's what happened. No, that's not what happened. Like, you were communicating to her in, like, an ingenuine way. You know what I mean? You were trying to – it was very obvious to her that you're trying to get something from her. You know what I mean? So – a lot of it is just like communicating. Okay, I'm in abundance. I'm free from outcome. Um, I'm not like so. You know, I'm not so detached to something happening here. Like if 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 you you have a boyfriend or it doesn't work out or whatever, that's cool. You know what I mean? I'm aware that there's millions of other girls that I can go and talk to, and you know she does. That she doesn't really have like honestly, she doesn't really have anything. At least from that short interaction, you're not. She doesn't have anything that you couldn't get from another girl, right? So that's the mindset. You feel me? <clears throat> cool, man. Do you have a niche? Like, do you go for white girls, black girls? Like, what's your type? Yeah. So, uh, in my area, like, I was born in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. I spent most of my life there, and uh, there's a lot of Hispanics over there. So my type used to be uh like latino girls like puerto ricans and colombian girls stuff like that but um as i moved around and started having different experiences and stuff i noticed that i i started attracting more white girls um and from my experience the uh, white girls tend to be more from my experience they tend to be more submissive more feminine and that's that has uh, grown to be like a quality I look for in women. Like that's an important quality to me. Like the, I want my women to be feminine and submissive. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't want them like trying to be alpha or trying to like fight me to be masculine. That, that doesn't make sense to me because if, if she, you know, if she was alpha or the masculine in the relationship, she would lose attraction for me. So why would she even want to, you know, do that? Like that doesn't even make sense to me. So 
a lot of uh you know one of the main qualities i look for like i said submissiveness and feminine i found that in a lot of white girls so it became like a, a taste for me if that makes sense but i like all girls to be honest with you it's just i tend to um find white girls tend to be more submissive more uh they allow you to lead more and they're okay with, you know which you created the, the, the boundaries for the relationship and all of that whereas uh i found like maybe like hispanics a little more challenging whatever and it, that's cool but like if you kind of don't really have time for like going back and forth the challenges and all these tests and stuff like if you're not really trying to deal with that it just makes more sense to go with the submissive girl if she's if she has all the other qualities you like like if she has a fat ass and all the things that you want why would i go with the one that's like you know what i mean trying to fight me for the masculine position versus the one who submits and it's like okay i want you to be my man i want you to lead me i want you know so that's what i'm at with that and will you um calibrate your approach depending on what the woman looks like or her color yeah so what i've found is um like for example like i said the latino girls and the black girls they tend to be more challenging so you have to be more alpha and more from my experience you have to be more alpha you have to be more uh i would say even aggressive more tough just show her that that like if you're gonna challenge me we're gonna go you know you're like i'm not gonna back down or it's not you're not gonna walk over me none, none of that's gonna go down so i demonstrate that a lot more whereas with you know with white girls i can be a little more laid back more chill you know what i mean and the vibes a little different but i just i just found like um uh, yeah like it, it's there is a lot of it i would say is you all the time you should be a masculine man all the time you should be confident all the time you should be strong all of that but it's there's slight differences, I guess you could say, depending on the type of girl you're going up to. So, and what do you say? What's your go-to? What are you teaching people to how to open these uh, sets? Yeah, so my my outlook on that is whatever. So you have like direct approaches and you have indirect approaches, right? Like a direct a direct approach would be, hey, I think you're attractive. I want to come and say hi. Or, hey, I thought you were cute. Want to introduce myself, right? Like, you just let her know that you see her as, you, you, you see her as a romantic interest. And then the indirect uh, approach would be, like, you'd ask her maybe the directions for somewhere. Like, oh, do you know where where I can find the nearest beach? Or where can, do you know where I can find this? Or where this is located? Or what do you think about, like, you say you're in a grocery store. What do you think about this cereal? You ever tried the cereal or whatever, right? So... But it, it, it depends on, like, I would say it depends on the person, right? Because some people, they vibe better with, like, indirect approaches. Like, that's more comfortable for them, and it makes more sense. And then some people, they rather be direct. And the way I see it is both ways work. You just have to decide, okay, um, when it comes to a direct approach, you're going to um, be more polarizing and you more, more you're going to get more rejections with a direct approach because you're basically right away basically telling uh putting a girl in a position to judge you judge you as a romantic and sexual interest right away because you're that's what you're communicating like hey i think you're attractive what do you think about me that's basically what you're saying when you do an approach uh direct approach so she's gonna she, she's gonna go off of how you look how you just uh verbalize what you said your bot your body language your energy she's going off all of that and she's going to judge you right away and so if you are not doing too well in those categories the judgment is not going to be good whereas if you go indirect you give her more time to you know like okay let me feel out his vibe let me see how he talks let me see how he carries himself you know she, you give her more time to get more information before she judges you whether she sees you as a ro romantic interest so um so yeah it just depends like I, I basically like you know tell the guy like which one which one do you prefer which one makes sense to you and then i just help him make it work basically all right yeah and and that's so obvious like you know i guess yeah like in terms of she's obviously going to judge you what, what, is she, what else has she got to go by you're just this random stranger you know and do you ever so what do you feel like um if i guess you would go out dressed as you are now right yeah yeah i would yeah okay uh, if you weren't feeling too good, you didn't have a haircut in a while, or, you know, would you dress like a bum and still practice your skills or 
you never do that. You would like, let's say let's say you want to go out first thing in the morning. It's like you haven't got milk. You want cereal. You're literally gonna get the milk, and you see this like stunner, like literally in the grocery short store. You weren't prepared. You're looking rough. Maybe you haven't even brushed your teeth. Are you still gonna approach? Um. Yeah, it depends. Like, let's say, let's say I'm like, cause sometimes I just get a vibe. It it really depends on like the, the vibe that comes up or the instinct that comes up. Cause sometimes I'll see a girl that I find attractive, and if I'm not really looking my best or whatever, or not feeling my best, I might be like, ah, it's whatever. Cause, cause my mindset is always abundance, right? Like, it, even if I don't approach this girl, there's gonna be a million, right? But sometimes if I get it, like I'm like, yo, nah, that's my type, man. I gotta at least go for it. You know what I mean? I'll go. But I'm aware, like, let's say I'm not looking my best or whatever. I'm aware of that. So I'm going to put more focus in, uh, you know, my communication and my body language and uh, my energy, the energy I'm giving off, like, my approach. Because, like, there's a difference between going up to her and, like, you know, communicating, like, yo, even though I'm not dressed nicely or whatever, I'm winning in life. Like, you can still communicate in that way versus you're not dressed well and then you walk up to her and you sound like you're losing or you sound like you just you're depressed or something now you just you're just out of there right so i would just focus on the other qualities more like demonstrating that i have those qualities so she she can some kind of look past the looks you know what i mean like just amplify those other ones so i would pro like ideally um i would have liked to already be in a social mood like if i see a girl I, that's why like uh you know in some of my videos i talk about like when you're going out to approach women and stuff like instead of just focusing on women like focus on just being social like talking to everybody like get, getting your vibe right because th she's judging that too like she's judging your energy she's judging whether or not you're in a social mood or you know what i mean because if you're not it kind of tells her that you you're anti-social you probably don't have nothing going on and she because she she can feel that right so Ideally, I would have, you know, if I see a girl that I find attractive, I would have ideally would like to be in a social mood. But if I'm not, I'll try to get in that state. Like, I'll, you know what I mean? Like, pretend or, you know, imagine that I was just, you know, talking and vibing with a bunch of people or something. Because I know the way how I'm thinking and, the, and what I'm believing is how my communication is going to come across. So, yeah, I would still I would still do the approach and like... Um, you know, it, it really just depends on the girl, right? Because some girls, they just, you know, if you if you look and bum me or whatever, they're just going to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to waste my time. But some girls, like if you walk up and, like I said, you you amplify those other things instead of your, maybe you're not dressed too nice. But if you your, your uh, communication is clear, you look her directly in the eye, you're grounded, you know what I mean? You're relaxed. Um, you know what I mean? And you're thinking positively and you're not super detached to the outcome. Like you, it's more like a playful vibe. Like, let me see what's good with this girl. It's not so much like, uh, I hope she likes me. Like it's a, it's just a different mentality. So she can feel that. And she, you know, if it's a girl who's like a little more experienced and she, and she could see past the looks cause you know, more experienced girls know, like, it's not all about the looks. Like you can, you can, a guy can look good or whatever and still be whack. Like his, his, personality could be whack his sex game could be whack you know what i mean they know that so if you can communicate positive positive qualities uh you know in in other areas to that girl she may say oh, okay now nah, let me let me see what's good with him okay you got yeah you got my number you know what i mean so that's that's uh my outlook on that <laughs> cool man cool all right Trey, i'm gonna share a couple um of my approach strategies and i want you to judge it and critique it yeah so one, so okay, so like I said, I was in a relationship for three and a half years. I've come out. I've been single for about four months, and uh, before we go locked down again, I was like, let me give this a try. Let's see what this all this um, pickup stuff is about. I need to obviously up my uh, my roster, or whatever. Um, so I would usually have an approach that I would pre that I would use when I was working. So if I was in the gym and I wanted to get a client, I'd just be like, hey, how's it going? And I'd approach everyone, like hot women, old women, like ugly women, and just like open it that way, just calm, like, hey, how's it going? Like, how's your day going? Um, so yeah, so firstly, what do you think about that? Just how's it going? Yeah, no, I think that's cool because that's that's natural. That's you just being friendly. That is, is you're just trying to like spread positive, vibes, you know, like good energy, positive energy. It's like you're you're working the room. You know what I mean? Like you're just showing people, like, look, I'm not a threat here. Like I'm I'm a cool dude. I'm a guy. I'm a social guy. Like I'm with the vibes. I'm here to contribute to the environment, make it better. 
You feel me? So like you're you're creating a vibe, bro. And like pe when you talk to other people, like everyone's seeing that. Girls are seeing that. Oh, he's cool. You know what I mean? Like so, if you were to approach a girl after doing that, it would go a lot better because she sees you as somebody. Oh no, this is just a cool social guy. You know what I mean? She's not gonna feel like oh no, he just singled me out and is trying to get me. You feel me? So yeah, yeah. I think I think that's cool. Yeah, I tried that a few times. What I found, yeah, is that women would be like, just confused, like, what, what does he want? Like, and it would, it would depend as well what I was wearing. So I like to wear like a tracksuit a lot of the time. Like if I'm just going to the, because a lot of the time you want to, you just like go about your business. You might be just going to the shop. You know, you're not thinking I'm going to see a hot girl, you know, or just a woman. And then I'm like, oh, like, and for me, it's like, um, like, how do you define who to approach? Like, does it have to be a seven above or a six and above, or you only approach in tens or nines? Like, what's your? Because of you touched on the abundance mindset. Like, what's your approach? Is it like, oh, I would, I would fuck her. I have to approach. I have to open. Or she could be a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Like, where do you? Because obviously, there's going to be an element of vulnerability into that, isn't it? That you could, you could risk being embarrassed at every approach. So, what kind of women are you are you allowing to put yourself in that situation with? If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So when I go out to cold approach, um, I've tried like different ways of going about it. Like I've tried going out and only approaching the girls I find attractive, right? Like usually like eights or higher is maybe sometimes some 7.5s, you know, are, are cute or whatever. I So I focused on uh, just going up to the ones I find attractive. I've tried going and talking to everyone. I've tried going and, um, oh, uh, like starting starting with like lower the lower level and then working my way up. I think the best way to go about it, to be honest, is just uh, like the mentality is really just you want to just get like free and comfortable with your environment, so that when the girl who you find attractive shows up, you're in a a, a good vibe. Like you're already relaxed, you're already confident, you're already feeling good. So when you go and talk to her, you can communicate your you can have your best. Uh, communicate like your best uh, best version of yourself, right? Because you you're feeling good, you're you're loose, you're relaxed. You already talked to a couple of different people, so it's not like you're in an antisocial mood or feeling shy. You don't you don't already dealt with all that. So by the time you got to that girl that you find attractive, now you can just be be you, like really be who you are. So for me, like I think the best way to go about it, like is just to like talk to anyone you can, like talk to guys, talk to girls, talk to anyone. But just be aware of your environment. So when that girl who you do find attractive pulls up or shows up, you know what I mean? You can kind of just, you know, smoothly, you know, find a way to, she may, she may even give you proximity. Like if your vibe is good, you, you know what I mean? And you, you're doing your thing. She may come around you and give you the opportunity to say something to her. She may be doing it subconsciously. Sometimes they kind of just in their own zone. They may, they may do something, don't even know they're doing it. So then when you see that proximity, you kind of, you may just, Say something like, oh, hey, I didn't even notice you or what, you know, whatever comes to your mind because you already in a good vibe. Something's going to come to your mind. But it's when you like haven't been talking or you, you know what I mean? You're in your head and then you see a girl. Then it's like, oh, shit, what do I say? What do I do? You know what I mean? That's that's like a whole different thing. So I I my goal is to not have to deal with do it that way. I'd rather do it a way where I'm already in a good vibe, already feeling relaxed. And so um. I think that that works better. That's why I say like take an hour out of your day, so that in that hour your your focus is to get in a social mood. You feel me? So like you you know what you're doing. Whereas if you're just moving through your day and you some some days you may be doing business all day, business all day, not talking to nobody, and then you see a girl that you uh you see a girl that you find attractive, it's gonna be a lot harder to approach her. However, if you've been doing like an hour a day consistently, it will be easier for you to get in that state. You see what I'm saying? But if you haven't been doing that, it's going to be super difficult. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be really difficult to get in that state. You can still do it and push yourself to do it, but it's going to be awkward. You're going to feel, it's going to feel off. And hopefully she sees value in the fact that even though you wasn't in a good mood, you still did it. Maybe she might say, oh, no, I think that's, that's kind of cool that he's, you know, even though he looks nervous or whatever, he's still doing it. Some girls will see, see some value in that. But, you know, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of like a pity pity thing and I don't, I don't want that i don't want her like oh yeah good you know at least he tried you know i don't want her thinking that i want her to think like 
nah, this dude walked up. He's confident. He, you know what I mean? Like, this is a dude I need to see. I need to, I want to know more. You know, I'm interested, right? That's what I want to communicate. So uh, that's like my goal, but, you know, as far as uh, cold approach is, goes, is like to, to be able to get in that state. Right. That's what that's why the consistency is important to be able to get in a state cut. To me, it's kind of like working out. Like when you work out, you have to uh, you have to like challenge yourself and you have to push through pain and all this stuff. So let's say like a threat shows up in your environment. You can get in that state like you could visualize like, OK, I'm getting through that last push. You can get yourself in an aggressive state and be ready to take, you know, if you see a threat or you know what I mean? Whereas if you don't do that you're not going to know how to respond. You're going to be scared. Like you're going to probably run or something. Cause you don't, you're not familiar with that energy or that vibe or that way of being. So it's, I think that's just a good, uh, uh, example or comparison to make. Yeah, man. No, great, great answer there. And even in terms of, yeah, like get yourself in that state. Um, it's like, you know, like, cause I was actually experimenting with like not drinking alcohol. Like I want to stop drinking cause it doesn't help with the fitness. It doesn't help you. It doesn't do anything for you, you know? And I thought, ah, oh, you know, I heard some of these guys like RSD guys talking about they don't drink like Owen, like RSD Tyler. I'm not sure. Do you are you familiar with RSD or not really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't sure if like they were for black people or not. I know there's that, there's a couple of blacks in there, but I wasn't sure if that was like, <laughs> if that was for everyone. <laughs> I really followed on like that. Like, I wasn't really relating to them that well, but they're like so popular that you would have to know, at least know about them and hear about them. I have friends that follow them or whatever. There was, there was a guy in there that was actually really good in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if you know, Julie, Julian Blanc. Yeah. He like, I seen some of his stuff. He, he was actually really good. I don't know what he's doing now, but there was a point where he was really good and I did learn some stuff from him. So yeah, RSD, they, they, they have some good advice in there. I just wasn't a big follower, but, I could say they did have some good good content at some point. I don't know where it's at now, though. <clears throat> yeah, I really like the whole bit about going out and just practicing game like sober. I was like, whoa, because for me, like with my friends, we'd literally drink and drink and drink and like have a wild time. But, you know, it's almost like without drinking, like we'd almost be guaranteed not a good time. Um, so I wanted to get um, not have that. And I realized just like going out and not drinking, just being social, like you warm up and all of a sudden it's like you've just had a bunch of drinks because you're socially calibrated. And even us having this conversation now, there's literally, I've got like a first date. She's coming over to the place. So obviously that might be a little bit awkward, but the fact that we're already vibing and stuff, I know I'm going to be warmed up. Uh, but obviously it depends on the woman as well. Because like I find, so this is a, let me give you these two situations. So we've got like, going to like here in London, we've got like Morrison's, which is like, I don't know, like Walmart or whatever. So you go there, it's like 11 a.m. Like, you know, the woman is not, probably hasn't spoken to anyone yet. You haven't spoken to anyone. And like, for me, a cold, cold approach hell is like, you go to one person, she doesn't even respond. She just like looks away and just kind of like scurries off. And then you go to someone else and she's like, just gives you a look and like, before and you, like you got AIDS or something or something horrific. And what I realized that actually happened to me, like recently, um before obviously it was locked down and i was like i was like hold on what's going on here you kind of scratch your head and i'm like i thought i could i thought looks don't matter like what's going on here and i kind of obviously my game could have could have been better or maybe my approach but you know it's just like how they blowing me off like even on the hello and then i realized obviously you know i looked at my presentation i was wearing a tracksuit like i'm a grown man quite big in a tracksuit women are probably especially white women in in london you know, I was approaching, there was a thing, they were pretty much all white women um, at the time. And they were probably, I, in my head, I was like, I just deduced that maybe, you know, my presentation was a bit intimidating or maybe it was just, it was just confused. And, and obviously I didn't, with the mask on, it's harder to tell your target market. So I was maybe approaching some grown women, like grown mature women. Um, and obviously maybe I'm making excuses. You can tell me. And then I'm going to ask you about another approach that someone else told me about. But yeah, what do you think about that? like self-reflection analysis and presentation yeah so you say you you, you approach two women back to back and, and oh it must have been like three and i was just like fuck this <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done for the day i got my milk and i went home yeah, yeah um usually when i go out bro like because i i've been experimenting with different ways of going about it usually when i go out i have like a quota or like an amount of girls that i uh made my mind up beforehand that's the amount of girls i'm gonna approach um, because the reason I do it that way is because when you go out and approach, like, let's say I go out and I approach three girls in a row and let's say they all like reject me really badly. That might kind of like 
you know, throw off my my vibe or throw off my my state of mind or whatever and make me feel like, ah, man, you know, maybe I just maybe I, I'll end right there or maybe I might even, might say hi to one more and I'm done, right? Whereas if I had already made up my mind before going out, like yo, I'm gonna talk to ten girls or I'm gonna talk to fifteen or I'm gonna talk to whatever, then it's like a it's like okay, even if I get those three rejections, I know in the back of my mind now nah, I said I was gonna talk to fifteen, and then what usually happens is if you know, even though you had those three blowouts or whatever, if you keep going towards that 15, you could actually end up meeting like a girl that was way better than those three that have blown you out. And then she's like, you know, you just vibing with her. Sometimes it's like you 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 just have a girl, you know, you approach a girl and it's just you just you guys just connect for whatever reason. Like it's just it's just smooth, it's just natural. That happens. And a lot of times it seems to happen after you were you had you have faced like some form of adversity earlier on, like you had got rejected or maybe just an interaction was just very awkward and threw you off. Maybe something weird just happened in the environment or maybe you got a bad call. Like, you don't know, like things happen. So for me, it makes more sense to like, if, if you want to, at least what's most effective for me is to just know, okay, I'm going to talk to this many women and that's my goal for the day. And I used to do that in the club too. Like when I go to the club, cause sometimes you go to a club, I, I don't know what's been your experience, but sometimes I go to a club and like it just it seems to just be a bad night. Like I'll talk to different girls and like they, nobody's having it. Right. So if I don't have a, a number in mind after a couple rejections, it's just OK. You just you just like, yo, I'm done. Like I'm not going to just keep getting rejected. Like what's going on here? But if you had a number in mind, it's like, OK, nah. but I said I was going to hit that number. So you just keep going. And then sometimes like you just, you know, you just run into a girl that's just with it. Or maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe her friends were being whack in the night or whatever. And she's like, she, and then you show up and she's like, oh, okay, finally somebody shows up to get me away from my friends because I'm not vibing with them right now. You don't, you know what I mean? You might just show up at the right time. Um, and sometimes it's like, if you show up in the right place at the right time, sometimes you don't even have to worry too much about uh, your game and all that because you just, you just happen to be the, it's like you just showed up and it's like you, you end up being Superman because you're like the solution to her problem for whatever for whatever reason, you know what I mean? So um, that's, some, that's something I think about too. Like uh, there's just like certain, I don't know, it just seems like there's just certain girls that are just out there for you, right? It just just connect that, it just vibe with you. So I'm aware of that too. Like I know you got, you got to have game, you got to have these things in your favor, but also understand like just by playing the numbers, there's just going to be some girls that are just going to rock. You feel me? So I'm aware of that too. No, that makes sense. Yeah, great advice. Because I was like, after those three, I was like, what the f what's, f what's going on here? Like, you know, Jay-Z ain't doing this shit. Kanye West ain't doing this shit. <laughs> but then like, do you know what as well? Because me, I rely on my body so much. I feel like maybe it's just confidence. Um, I feel like if I'm in a club or the weather's hot and I've got a tight t-shirt on or a vest, I'm like, yeah, like I'll go up to anyone. But it's like, if I'm covered up and you know, I'm relying on my face and that, <laughs> I know that sounds really bad. Maybe I need some um, some counseling. I need to see a, psych, psych, um, a psychologist or something. But I, honestly, I feel like, because, you know, I'd give my my face like average. You know what I'm saying? I give the whole package better than average. Um, so I feel like if I'm in a club, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's showtime. But daytime, if I've got a big coat on, you know, and I'm just, you know, and maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just got to work on. Maybe I've just got to work on that. But you're right. Because I remember even I done like, um, I thought, let me give this a try. I went for a walk. We got a nice long walk near where I live by the water and everything. And I think um, the walk is like an hour. And I think I approached about six women on the way, um, all like blowouts within like moments, like maybe five to 10 seconds max. And then I saw this Portuguese, she was like a Portuguese woman, proper smart, like high level woman. And, but you know, and, and I got a number and everything and we we're talking, but she said she'd only been with one guy or two guys before and she was like a Christian and stuff like that, which obviously I like the Christian side, but um, yeah, that, that just goes to show. That's a really good point. I was just thinking like, oh yeah, I've been in that situation where you're just like, you know, cause I don't know, maybe it's well, but it's how you take the rejection as well. It's very important, isn't it? Like how you're feeling after rejection. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another good thing about cold approach, it teaches you how to deal with rejection. It teaches you that rejection is, a, it's a part of life. Like, it's just something that just happens in life. And cold approach allows you to, like, experience it uh, over and over. And you start to, like, create a relationship with it where you kind of just see it for what it is. Like, it's not something to be taken personally. You're not going to get every girl. Just like how you're not going to close every client. It's just, there's, you know what I mean? That's how it is. But 
you know, you just understand, okay, let me just, it's a numbers game, but let me see how much I can get the numbers in my favor. And that's where these other things come in, working on your physique, working on your communication skills, working on your body language, working on your confidence, all these things, they increase your, 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 your conversion rate, if you will. Right. But it is a numbers game. Like you're not going to get every girl, but um, you can you can kind of look at it like if you go out and you talk to 10 girls and you don't even get one. It's like, OK, something's off here. You know, some, I, I need to work on something. Right. So you can use the numbers to kind of get an idea of where you're at with things. But um, yeah, it, it, is, it is a numbers game. But like you can you can work on qualities uh, on yourself, you know, work on different qualities about yourself to increase your favorites, you feel me? For sure, for sure. Oh man, this has gone so quick. There's only like five minutes left. Um, well, they're not in time anyway. Um, all right, so I've got a question for you. So I said there's was two approaches I wanted to ask you about. So this is the second approach someone gave me. So there was this coach, well, I don't know if he's a coach, I think he was starting up and he was like, oh, it's all about, um, what was his term? Um, is it um, authentic? No, it was like, ah, oh, vulnerable, like vulnerable attraction or something like that. And his thing was like, you see a girl, you're like, hey, can I share something with you? And then she stops and you're like, oh, when I saw you, I felt something inside. And then you just go from there. What do you think about that? I think that's interesting. I think depending on your delivery, you could definitely get some interest off of that. You know, if you if you deliver it right, I think a lot of it, that is delivery because it could come off as creepy too, you know? So, um, I, I mean, that's that's sounds interesting. <laughs> You know, I tried it and it was crazy, like literally opening up everyone. I mean, I tried it more in the evening time. Actually, have I tried it in the daytime? No, daytime worked well as well. Like literally they would all open, but yeah, what was my problem with that? I kind of felt like a prick. Like I felt like a sucker, like, um, like oh, this guy's like falling in love. Like, who, who is this guy? Like he's for, all talking about feelings and, and that. You know what I'm saying? But at least it got the point across instantly that I'm into you. Whereas I felt like when I was like, hey, how's it going? Like, you know what I'm saying? The woman's still unsure. Like, what do I want? No, I want money or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I'm not, I just wanted to get your kind of thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to run it back, what exactly were you saying exactly though? So, so yeah. So I'll just be like, see someone like, hey, um, um, hey, can I share something with you? And they'll be like, okay. And like, um, yeah, when I saw you, like I felt something like inside. like, And that could be genuine, like butterflies or something. Like you just say that. And like, oh, like giggle, oh, oh, oh. And then obviously just go in there. But I found as well, like, it's not very sexual. It's not a very sexual tone. It's a very deep tone. So like, I'm like, I literally speaking to this girl and we're now talking about family and stuff like that. I'm speaking for ages. And now you're trying to pull him back. And it's like, it just was all messed up. Versus if I kept it like sexual, like, hey, like you got a like, fat ass. I, I never said that, but imagine if I said something like that, like, oh, your booty's, you got a sexy body or something like that. Then you know you're, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, I don't have the experience. I put my hands up. Like my whole thing, yeah, has been out, like all my success has either been um, night game, uh, online and social circle, technically from working in work where I've worked, like working in the gym. Um, and I actually, you know, and just, it's just been fascinating even like really looking into this stuff. Like, cause you can look back at your part of past experiences and relationships and be like, Oh, that's why, because even my ex so was together for over three and a half years. Like for me, I settled down with her because I thought she was way like hotter than anything I was dealing with before. But then, and then, and then we, but we slept together so fast. I hope she's not watching this, but it was really fast. But I realized, you know, after months of teaching her, I was actually in a position of power being like a fit, like a coach. And she knew my my other trainers there. I had the social proof. Like she'd see me training people. Like everyone knew me. And she was very comfortable because it was very slow. Like from when we first saw each other and before we actually got together, it must have been like four months of seeing each other like multiple times a week. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting even like looking back. Like obviously you can learn the skills moving forward, but you can realize looking back and even having this conversation, like I've, I can look at back at interactions and be like, um, this is what happened. But yeah, man, you got me excited. I might just you know, forget the date. Let me just go cold approach. Let me go to the go to the grocery store and try this stuff. But um, but yeah, man, well, last question. Because yeah, I was trying this on this new platform. Obviously, you know, Facebook usually pops a bit more. Um, but I think this will grow. But yeah, um, what's something I should have asked you in this? I know we I've literally got about five other questions, but we have to do a part two. Uh, but what's something I should have asked you um, today? Something you should have asked me. Um, hmm. that's a good question. I mean, 
I guess something you could have asked me is like basically like what what do I teach like as far as like structure, right? Like if a guy's coming in, like what structure do I give? And like basically I, I told guys like because I, I just look at my process and then I just teach it, right? So the first thing I, I worked on uh, or I, there's five main things that I feel like I worked on really well. The first one is I developed an archetype. I created an archetype or identity that uh is attractive to women right like it's like a, a like a sexy archetype like i've created myself to look like a type of guy that certain women find sexy right like there's just certain women that's gonna go for a guy that has my archetype same thing with you there's certain women that's just gonna go for it so that's one thing that's something that have in your favor right because there's going to be a certain niche of women that you can go and get even if these other qualities you haven't really worked on too well, you could still probably get some women just off of that archetype, right? So that's one thing I teach. The other thing is um, your confidence. Like if you don't have confidence, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to approach. You're not gonna be able to interact with women properly. You're not gonna be able to express yourself. You're not gonna be able to lead. You're not gonna be able to set boundaries. You're not gonna be able to pass your tests. So confidence is something you you have to have, and you want to like get it as high as you can. Right. So I teach that. I teach guys process on how to build their confidence. Um, the next thing is uh, attraction. So you have to be able when you uh, communicate to a woman, you have to be able to communicate in a, in a way that's attractive. Right. Because she's responding. She is responding to you based on how much you can trigger her or her attraction, like how much you can create these feelings in her that make her want to know more about you, may, make her want to be more interested in you. So I teach guys how to OK, how to communicate an attractive way, all right? Because you can have a nice archetype, you can have confidence, but you can also communicate in a way that's just not attractive, you feel me? So, and then the next one is comfort. So you have to be comfortable in your own skin. And then once you're comfortable in your own skin, you can make other people feel comfortable and you can make women feel comfortable. So that's another thing that guys have to work on. And then the last thing is you have to be able to seduce a woman. So you basically have to be able to get a woman to Okay, you can get a woman to see you as uh, okay, as a cool archetype or whatever. But how do you get her to like fall in love with you, basically? Like, okay, all these other guys, and she just puts her attention in your direction. Like, this is the dude, right? So I basically like those are like the the main things I help guys with. Because if you can get those five areas covered, then your dating life will be handled, basically. You know what I mean? So yeah amazing and that's definitely we definitely have to do a part two after that like there's so much more to go into um all right so trey share with everyone like how what how they can get in touch with you if they want to you know find out more about you what they can do yeah so i'm really active on facebook so facebook.com uh forward slash the real trey morgan or just search for trey morgan and you're gonna see a picture of like a, a if you ever seen the movie Beauty and the Beast, it's like a picture of the beast with like a woman laying on his chest. Like if you see that picture, that's that's my profile. So that's me on Facebook. On YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I just made it like recently, but the the username for the channel is Ice Tray Game. And then uh, I'm working on I'm working on uh, Instagram, but I just made a TikTok, and TikTok is also Ice Tray Game. Amazing. Yeah, send me those links as well. I'll put them in the description cool. for everyone to check out. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time, Trey, man. That was, I really enjoyed that, actually. I learned a lot. Um, and hope, you know, some of the brothers learned a lot watching this as well. Um, yeah, fellas, if you hope you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe. And yes, I'll catch you all on the next one. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Awesome, man.